guys, Brooke Lark here with CheekyKitchen.com. Now, I've only just put up a few videos, but already something has struck a chord with you. This morning I woke up and I had 10 additional subscribers to the channel and two emails in my inbox from you readers and viewers wondering if I could post a tutorial to my uh, dark metallic back backdrops. And you can see this in my five essentials for dark photography um, video. I featured these backdrops and talked just a little bit about them, but apparently this is the thing that you are dying to know. I've gotten dozens of emails from you, and so I thought that it was high time. I wanted to walk you through a couple of basics, and then today I'm going to show you how to do a like really quick 10-minute coating that will help you get an absolutely gorgeous background. And the first thing that you need is you've got to start with a um, sheet of steel. And you can purchase 48 by 36 sheets at Home Depot. Um, they're actually in the like plumbing and uh, you know, like metal section. So for those of you who have talked to me before, these are actually different sheets than the aluminum. And there are, there are two options. Um, the aluminum sheets are already pre-cut. The, the uh, steel sheets come in these really large sheets. And you do need to purchase metal cutters for them. Right there by where you buy the sheets, there should be a $20 pair of gigantic scissors um, by them. And then just snip your metal sheets in half. And then you'll get two for about $16 is what our pricing um, is here in Salt Lake City. So two backdrops for $16, so we're looking at $8 per backdrop just for the steel material. I love these. They are lightweight, they're easy to paint, they're easy to store. I have dozens and dozens and dozens of different options. And what I've been doing now is starting to take um, inspiration from Instagram followers or Instagram photographers that I absolutely love and starting to recreate some of those looks and I will continue to share with you how I'm getting those looks but for today again let's just start with a couple of really um, with one really simple approach now just to show you quickly the variety of um, different looks that you can get on these steel sheets again this one kind of looks like wood this one is kind of a metallic blue. It looks absolutely gorgeous when shooting with all blue um, she, uh, plates and, and cups. I just love this one. This one is kind of a purpley maroon with some copper accents. And the way that I'm getting all of these different looks is I'm actually using just two things. Modern Masters Metallic Effects Paint, which I'm gonna talk to you about in a second. You can also visit my website, cheekykitchen.com, for specific links to all of these products. And um, the second thing is spray paint. So a little bit of spray paint, and then this Modern uh, Masters Metallic just creates like every option that you could ever want, ever. This is one of my favorites, this kind of copper, um, it, it almost looks like um, an antique um, like cookie sheet, except obviously so much bigger, so it creates this gorgeous, almost table sized space. And now the last one that I'm not going to show you because that's the one that we're going to be making today. So what I did is I took the video camera out with me yesterday into my backyard because that is where I work um, when I'm creating all of these backdrops. I threw down a basic plastic drop cloth. I forgot to wear gloves, so I still have paint in my fingers. I had um, one of these metal backdrops and I've actually lined it in uh, this. You can see it's just like paint tape. I've also used electric electric tape or duct tape. 
And the reason that I'm going to line these is because when you do snip them, the edges can be really sharp. And I thought that I was invincible and didn't originally line them with tape and then ended up with like the paper cut of death. So I do recommend when you cut these, just stick a lining on both sides. You're going to paint right over it so you won't see it on the front. And it just makes them so easy grab. Um, so there we go. What you're going to need is a sheet of galvanized steel, some steel wool. You're going to need some tape to edge your steel um, backdrop. You're going to need some spray paint, and today we're going to work primarily with a blue and turquoise spray paint. I was so inspired by this gorgeous blue background by, uh, that Lou Madeline uses on Instagram, and so I wanted to recreate one of those. So you actually get to see me recreating that today. You don't have to stick with blue. Go with any color. I found primarily um, blacks, dark browns, a little bit of purple works nicely, and blue. I would personally steer clear of oranges or yellows or super, super bright colors when making these. Um, we may play with that eventually, but for now, those are really some great dark backdrop colors to play with. Um, and then you're also going to need the Modern Masters metallic paint. We're using, um, I believe, an iron oxidizing paint. In the video that you're about to see, there is also a copper oxidizing paint, and there is a bronze oxidizing paint. And actually, we're not using iron, we're using the bronze. Um, so again, click over to CheekyKitchen.com, visit the Resources Biz Tips section, and I will have a tutorial there that lays this all out for you so that you have the shopping list, you've got links directly to all of these products, and you know exactly what to do because I will give you a printable that shows you what, um, how to do this. But for now, stay tuned and check out what happens in the background. So the first thing that we're gonna do is steel pool our sheet. And because I am not going for like a wood look on this, I'm just going for kind of a countertop look, um, then I'm just gonna kind of take it in circles, back and forth, just make sure that my sheet is super scuffed up. Alright, and because I want this to kind of again have that countertop wooden, maybe granite look, I'm going to just give it a quick layer of dark. This is an espresso, a nice dark brown. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to start layering on some blues. At this point, we've got a couple of different layers. I'm going to give us a little spray of bleach. And then I'm going to put on a little bit of blue. This is a really dark blue. Now I'm going to pull out my Modern Masters oxidizing bronze paint. It's this kind of gorgeous uh, black brown with a little bit of me metallic hue in it and then I'm going to throw on some blue patina solution and I'm putting that straight into the paint and then with a brush I'm just going to work that through and don't worry because we're going to go back and do it all again so this does not have to be perfect. I think I'll probably go with some nice non-circular lines. You can see the uh, paint is kind of pulling up against that water and those other layers that we've created. That's good. We want that. And what's going to happen is as this dries, the patina is going to start to oxidize. And that's Awesome. All right, we're going back with all of our colors again. Okay, 
so we're back now with this one layer blue and oxidized copper um, background. It's not quite dry yet, but I just wanted to show you how totally amazing this is starting to look. Just all sorts of beautiful color. And um, as I look at it now, um, some of those layered sprays ended up being a little too big and bubbly for me. It has this weird like, I don't know, under the sea look, which I don't really love. So I am totally not panicking about it because I'm just gonna take my steel wool and actually just kind of muss it up a little bit. And because it's not quite dry, it actually works really, really nicely for me because I can just kind of re-engage some of that, uh, sorry, I'm thinking about what I'm doing. Um, I'm just gonna pull out some of that um, not quite dry bronze paint. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little more of the patina solution, of which I am very, very low on top. And then on top of that, if I want to, I'm just gonna give it another little spray of Clorox and then I'll just spray some more color on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry one more time and show you the finished product uh, in the studio. And that is a really rough shot of the process that I used to create this absolutely gorgeous background. After the video stopped running, I did add a little more steel wool and then I kind of played with a little bit of spray paint to get the finished product. But as you can see, we have this absolutely gorgeous texture. I was a little worried about that kind of sea foamy texture, but once I had it all steel wooled and even a little bit sandpapered and then um, <clears throat> did one one or two more layers of paint. Um, I ended up with this like absolutely gorgeous brown and uh, blue textured look. It almost looks like um, maybe like a cement wall texture. I'm super excited to shoot on this. What I'm gonna do is throw some stuff on top and take some pictures for you and then let you see what this amazing background looks like. delighted with how this backdrop came together. The texture, the color, the way that the metallic paint worked together with the spray paint to just create this like gorgeous old texturized look. It is making my day. If you want to see where else this backdrop ends up and what other pictures I use it in, make sure that you follow me on Instagram. I'm at Cheeky Kitchen and I'm always giving behind the scenes photo tips so I would love to have you follow me there. And stay tuned because this is the first tutorial of many dark photography backdrop tutorials as well as light photography backdrop tutorials. I am going to share every single secret that I have found that's working in my professional photo studio and we are going to get you the most gorgeous food photography of your life. So hit that subscribe button below and stay tuned until next time. I'm Brooke Clark from CheekyKitchen.com.